Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Realistic here and I'm doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net and in this video what I'm going to be doing is going over three common mistakes that are used when applying bus compression to your mixes. So yeah, we're going to dive in and I got a couple compressors opened up here. This is the compressor that I typically use when I'm doing my bus compression on my master channel right here, but I know this is one that is not commonly used and not a lot of people have access to the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor. So let's go ahead and inactivate that one. This is another one that I use. I use this pretty much almost exclusively for my drum sums and my background vocals. I love the tone of it. But again, this is one I know not a lot of people are using or have access to. So let's go ahead and inactivate that one too. And what we'll focus on is the SSL bus compressor. And the reason why I'm going to focus on this one is because I know a lot of people have access to this one. This is the UAD one. Waves also makes a version of it and it goes on sale a lot of times so you can always pick this one up for super cheap with waves also another reason is a lot of stock plugins and a lot of the more popular DAWs have based their compressors on this one the master channel and reason is based on this one and also one of the stock plugins in Ableton it's called glue compressor is based on this one too you'll notice that the parameters are going to be the same exact thing with the same numbers and same settings and everything so that's why we're going to focus on this one because again a lot of people have access to this one it's a really popular one and you know what it just sounds nice it sounds awesome so one thing I want to note and this won't be considered one of the three common mistakes but one thing that you want to do is when you open this up you'll notice that a lot of the settings are, are going to be already set you're going to want to go ahead and change that you're going to want to zero that out do zero makeup gain make sure that you got the highest threshold do the slowest attack and fastest release that way the compressor isn't doing anything and then we can make Make the adjustments later on because what you'll notice the way that they had this set up is you'll notice that it's gonna be doing a lot more work than we really want it to back on this so I calm down oh now four with the top down oh squad head to the compound so just get in the habit of zeroing that out to start out with, and then we can always make the changes later. All right, so now let's get into our three common mistakes that are used. Now, the first common mistake is people are not mixing into the bus compressor. They're adding the bus compressor after the fact that they've already spent hours on the mix. And that's something that you typically want to avoid. And the reason why is because the bus compressor is going to change the tone and the sonics of the mix. And another thing that's going to happen is it's going to change the dynamics. So you want to get in the habit of mixing into the bus compressor. That way, when you're making adjustments to levels and you're doing EQ things and stuff like that you can hear what's going on with the compressor because when you increase a level of something and then you'll start to notice that the compressors may be slamming too hard when the 808 is that high or maybe the kick drum is causing it to pump a little too much so it's things to, to keep in mind and like I said it, it helps a lot and then at the end you've already created the tone that you want The next common mistake is too much gain reduction. So the compressor is slapping too hard and it's lowering the gain too much. It's causing the compressor to pump and it's taking away the excitement and the life of the music. So you can hear right there when I had the compressor just slapping and doing too much gain reduction. What was happening is we started to get a pumping feeling. The song got a lot smaller. It seemed like it shrank and things got a lot less exciting. So what I usually do is I try to do anywhere from negative 2 to negative 3 dB of gain reduction. That's usually a good way to just kiss it down and, and allow it to just do some subtle things. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to do subtle things just so things seem more cohesive cohesive and gelled together. Yeah, so that should usually be pretty good right there. Like I said, negative two, negative three. 
All right, now the last thing that I'm going to touch on that's a common mistake are people are using an attack time that's too fast. And what happens with that is with the attack time is it's how fast does the compressor react before the gain reduction begins. So if it's slower attack time, the gain reduction isn't going to begin right away. If it's a fast attack time, though, the gain reduction is going to begin instantly. The problem with that is when it's on your drum sum or your master channel is it's going to slap down as soon as a kick drum or a snare hits and what's going to happen is it's going to compress those transients down and we want to keep that information that information is important it's what allows the song to just hit and bump and have punch to it and drive and so i'll show you what that sounds like and why we want to avoid it So you can hear when we did a faster attack time, again, it shrunk. The drums and the power of the drums started to go away. We started to get more of a pumping feeling, and it had a lot less pop and drive to it. And that's why we want to avoid it. And so generally what I do is I stick between 10 and 30 milliseconds. I lean more towards 10 milliseconds usually for a lot of songs just because more of a modern sound. I do want a little bit of an impact with the compressor, but that's generally what I'm sticking with because, it, like I said, it gives me more of a subtle tone to it and it allows it to just have more of a kiss down to it and we still get to keep the transients and stuff with it so those are three common mistakes practice when using bus compression so i'm hoping that you got a lot out of this tutorial today hopefully there's some information that was useful if you're getting a lot out of this but you want to see more please feel free to comment below let us know what kind of tutorials that you want to see in the future and oracle and i can definitely make that happen we're always trying to find the content that you want to see if you're liking what you're hearing from me you can find me everywhere on social media at realistic productions you can find me at the web realisticproductions.net you can find my man sound oracle everywhere at sound oracle and if you're looking for the best 808s the best kicks the best snares with the craziest loops and samples you can find on the internet right now go to soundoracle.net all right till next time